everything you need to know about silver and gold all in one concise video. Well, maybe almost everything, but I've been listening to and talking with some high-level people, getting their ideas about where we sit right now with silver, with gold. And yes, I believe $3,000 gold is in our near-term future. $50, $60 silver is also very possible. But what's the current status? What's going on out there right now? The big picture items that we need to consider as we put together this thesis for much higher silver and gold prices. Well, the first thing we can look at, the most obvious, right? Sometimes you may not realize your nose is on your face. Your glasses are over your eyes. The most obvious things are sometimes hard for us to see. Let's talk about central banks buying gold. Everybody keeps going back to that. These are the most sophisticated investors in the world. They rule the world financial and monetary system. Let's not listen to what central banks are saying. Let's look at what they are doing because central banks have a pretty good record of saying one thing and doing something else. And when we look at what they're doing, they are buying gold. Now, of course, that's also good for precious metals. Now, let's shift over to the other major factor in terms of pricing of gold and silver in U.S. dollars. The United States Federal Reserve, their monetary policy, which has been super hawkish over the last 12 months. Is that about to change? Let's not listen to what they say. Let's look at what they're doing. And they just paused. Hey, look, if inflation was really that big of a deal, really this big issue, you know, they like to jawbone and talk and talk and talk, and they've been doing that. Some people are calling it a hawkish pause. They paused. That's the fact, right? If inflation was such a big deal, wouldn't they have raised rates? So when we look at what the Fed has done, they paused. When we look at history, they've never raised rates after a pause, and typically they lower rates within 90 days. Now, there's no guarantee that's going to happen again, but we need to consider the facts. And also, let's look at the U.S. economy. We know the effects of the interest rate hikes from the Fed. They have a big lag effect. That's like when you take antibiotics when you have a cold. Maybe it takes four or five days for the antibiotics to really take hold. And with the interest rate increases, the record level of interest rate increases we saw from the Fed over the last 14 months, they take six to 12 months to bleed through to the economy. So we're just feeling that right now. I was talking to a guy last night who happens to work a little part-time job at Home Depot. I asked him, I said, are you seeing a slowdown? Do you sense that people are buying less. And he was like, absolutely. It feels much different right now than it did a year ago. And what does that mean for the silver price and gold price? Well, it means this. If we move into the coming six months and the economy starts to sputter more and more, and think about it. What did we hear just recently? The PMI, manufacturing numbers, contracting. Things are going to get slower and slower. Talk to somebody that works at a car dealership. We're even hearing casual dining establishments, right? The Applebee's of the world, the, uh, the, the, the cheesecake factories of the world. They're all talking about lower foot traffic because people don't have the disposable income. There's no more room on their credit cards, right? They've gone through all their savings. When all that feeds through, that's also going to force the Federal Reserve to be more lenient with monetary policy, more easy money. And that alone will catapult the price of silver and gold. And all of that is under the best case scenarios. We have some potential black swan events that could make the Fed put them in a position where they have to react very quickly. Guys, the banking crisis is not over. The smart guys in the room are all 
telling me that. I have a degree in accounting. I understand money and finance and what's going on in the banking system. Look, I won't bore you with details, but I'll tell you the banks are still not in good shape. They're making believe. They have Disneyland accounting that everything's fine. But the reality is things are boiling under the surface. And if rates do happen to go up just a little bit more, right? And when commercial real estate starts to bleed through those banks, bankruptcies, those valuations, those loans that people can't repay, the banking crisis could come to a head very quickly again. And what would that do? That would force the Fed again to print money, right? To save the day, to paper over everything one more time, one more layer of paper on top of the problem. But paper doesn't hold up. And when they do that, again, the silver and gold price, they're smart, right? It's a universal market all around the world. It knows what's going on. It knows what devaluation of the U.S. dollar means, and that means much higher prices for silver and gold. Now, we can't talk about the big macro picture, the big world picture, without the other giant elephant in the room right now, this summer's BRICS meeting. Look, everybody's thinking that we're going to see a gold-backed currency. Now, will that happen? We don't know. But we do know that the BRICS countries, they control a lot of the world's resources. They have a lot of the world's population. They definitely are moving away from the dollar. We know that they are accumulating large amounts of gold. We know that they produce large amounts of gold. We know that they've said they want a new reserve currency based on real assets. Most of the smart guys in the room, when they look at it, say that always boils down to gold. It's really hard to back a currency with something like oil or wheat or any other real commodity. So we could, right, we could this summer get news from the BRICS that could be rocket fuel for the gold price and the silver price as well. When we take a look at the big picture, under the best of circumstances, the future looks really good for the silver price and gold price. But if any of those black swan oddball situations comes to a head, we could see a very fast increase in both silver and gold. And let's reflect for just one moment. The current price, gold, silver, not that bad. They've actually held up pretty well in the face of many different headwinds thrown at them over the last two years. Their energy is coiled up and stored and ready to explode. I happen to think that once gold gets above $2,100 per ounce, it's going to move super fast up into the $2,500 $2,600 range. And 3000s not out of the question, quicker than most of us want to realize. Look, I don't have a crystal ball. Don't make any financial decisions based upon what I'm saying. Nobody's paying me to say this. It's just my opinion. You have an opinion too. Leave it in the comment section below. Go watch a live stream. And thank you for joining me today.